One thing that I do do in the spring, early spring of the year or late in the fall is in a lot of cases I'll use lighter line yet. I will go to 8 and 10. Um, I wish I could use 12 all the time, but depth is critical on a lot of the baits that I really like to use. In, in cold water, there's two, there's two types of crankbaits that really are effective. Uh, crankbaits that have a real tight, subtle action and flat sides to them, and crankbaits that have an extremely wide action with a lot of wobble, say like a wiggle wart, or a, for me, it's a, a Strike King Series 4 is one that has a, is a great cold water crankbait. It has a super wide wobble to it, and you can really get it down on the bottom and just crawl it along. So um, the fish are, are not near as aggressive when the water's 40 degrees out there, and um, you know, you're, not, you're not cranking with as much speed, so it's not near as hard around the zebra mussels and, and the sharp rocks and riprap and things like that as far as nicking up your line. And believe it or not, to me, it seems like fluorocarbon is tougher in cold water than it is in warm water. It, it actually makes it harder, so to speak. Just the difference between 43 degree water and 80 degree water, you can tell it in fishing it. You know, I mean, you see how it comes off your spinning rod. It's stiffer, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's harder just from the temperature change. So you can get away with it, but it, it is an absolute must in cold water. More so than ever, you want that, that line, that, that fluorocarbon that sinks, it's gonna help get those baits down there. Um, and, it, and, it, and it makes a big difference. Now, the other series of baits that I really use a lot in, in cold water power fishing is a jerk bait. Well, I saw it firsthand that they absolutely know everything that's around them and uh, we're really susceptible to that. So that was a really good lesson for me to learn. So I do know in cold water that they really don't like things in proximity to them and it's their lateral line. So that's why so many times with a red eye shad when I'm you know, ripping and letting that bait flutter, I catch them in the back, in the butt, in the top of the head, in the sides. They're just, they're feeling it with their body and, and reacting to it as that bait comes and moves close to them and, and just swatting at it, and I, and I catch a lot of them like that. So um, the lateral line is a lot more important this time of year um, for them than it is in, in other times of the year. So flat side baits like that are really good. And I love to throw it when the water's got a, a stain to it, and you know I'll throw the reds and the crawfish. Crayfish are the primary forge. If I'm fishing a bait down near the bottom, you know, it's, it's going to be crawfish pattern this time of year on, on my crankbaits. If the water's dirty, a lot of times I may use a chartreuse perch or a chartreuse blackback just because of the visibility. But I believe the bass are really focused uh, when, when they're down near the bottom, and especially if you have stained water, on foraging for crayfish. It's the easiest meal that they can find through most of the winter. Now, uh, the opposite of that is, is when we have some of these reservoirs that have a lot of shad in them and the water gets cold and you start to get a shad kill, you see a ton of fish roaming around suspended. They're just swimming around looking for those dying shad. One of the first telltale clues that you're gonna have that is you're gonna see seagulls just all over the lake, just, just coming around and occasionally going down and getting shad. If I see that, if I ever see that, I know absolutely 100% that I'm gonna catch them jerking. If that water's clear enough for them to see my jerk bait, I absolutely know a jerk bait is, is gonna be a prime time player. And then it's just a matter of getting a, a bait that's gonna be into that depth zone. Um, you know, last year um, we developed a new jerk, or I did a new jerk bait for Strike King that's a really special deep bait. Good question, when do you use a rattle and when do you not? Um, just like I told you before, I, don't, I can't promise you when the best time to use a, the, the standard rattling one is or to change it up, but one thing I have found is that changing sound can, can be, it, the first thing I do instead before I change colors or change baits, because you, once you hit a school of fish, whether you're cranking a ledge or you know, you're in a, in this time of year, they're bunched up in a lot of places. The one thing um, that I know for sure is that you have a short window of time to keep that group going and biting. And I've tried to say, well, hey, you know, you get a few and they quit biting your red eye shad or you quit biting your crankbait. Well, let's throw a jig or let's do, a lot of times that just kills everything. So you gotta get uh, something in there in a, in a pretty quick time frame. And more so than anything, instead of changing color, for me, it's changing sound. So my, uh, my new favorite cold water bait is the, the Red Eye Shad Tungsten 2-Tap. And, and the reason for that is, is not that the sound that it makes, because a regular Red Eye Shad, you know, with all the BBs, is very effective. I've, I've caught a jillion bass on it. Um, so I don't know that it's necessarily the sound. What I love about the Tungsten 2-Tap, 
because I'm always trying to get the bait deeper, is even though we call the half ounce a half ounce, it's heavier. I've weighed them, okay? And it sinks, uh, it sinks a little faster with the tungsten and it fishes a little better in deep water. So we just came out with a three quarter ounce version. It's brand new for this year. And so it's pretty much when I'm fishing cold water and I'm trying to, and I'm trying to fish deeper than a cast and retrieve depth with a red eye shad, I'm using that tungsten two tap version and yo-yoing it. Back to the jerk bait real quick. A couple things on technique and it's not really what this is about, but it's so critical when you're fishing a jerk bait to, to not overfish your bait. A lot of people get caught up in um, just casting it out there and reeling and jerking. Never move your jerk bait towards the boat with your reel. You should never reel pull your bait in with your reel. You're always working your bait. It should always have slack for every twitch, every jerk. It should always start with slack and finish with slack. If you want that bait to have its maximum action to get that erratic side to side action, um, you gotta fish it with slack. So you start with the rod pointing at it, you got a couple of feet in there, and I'm gonna just pull it down, and, and I hit mine real hard. I, I really work it. If you watch me fish a jerkbait, even in cold water, I really work it hard. But when I, once that line tightens up, I just let the rod tip recoil back at the bait and just, just let, it, um, let it go. So what happens is that bait only moves a few inches forward but it does it real quick, and as soon as you let the tension off of it by pointing the rod back at it, that bait will turn in the water. And with a little bit of practice in it, and a great way to learn how to fish a jerk bait is in a swimming pool. And if you can get a bigger swimming pool, um, it, it really helps. So if you can go to a school swimming pool, something like that, because a bait responds differently 20 yards away from you, 30 yards away from you, at the end of a long cast, then it does, it's very easy to get a bait to to work real good with a couple of feet of line out, there's no stretch there, there's no give. Even with fluorocarbon, you know, if you got 10 pound fluorocarbon, um, you know, you can get a good response close. But what you'll learn is, he asked about in a lot of these northern lakes um, where you have a lot of pike and, and musky. Um, I've seen definitely that lakes that have tons of northerns in them can shift how, where the bass will be. They're not the number one predator in the food chain. And so those pike will really focus on, they'll be on the off, you know, they'll just have the deep end of that weed point just covered up and those bass will be down the side a, a little bit more. But um, I don't worry about them losing crankbaits or anything like that. I got an unlimited supply. <laughs>